Hi there. As you can see, today's topic is going to be, is it okay to spank children? And um, as an adult, you probably know that times have changed over the years. You can talk to your parents and your grandparents and ask them, how were you disciplined as a kid? And the further back you go, the more you're going to hear that they got whoopings and spankings. And they got, you know, they got a strap, <laughs> belt, um, a switch, um, they, they, yeah, a paddle, a board to, to spank the kids. Yep, this is all perfectly normal. Um, before the 1980s. Uh, so going all the way up until like 1985 or so, um, people generally spanked their kids. They would use their hand and it was typically on the butt, but not always. Um, if you're inside of your home, uh, there was no such thing as um, the government taking your kids away. Um, and so they were your kids, parents. Those were your kids. Um, you could let you could make them go outside all day, and you weren't worried about it. If they got in trouble or got hurt, um, no, the government wouldn't would not come down on you as you know being a, abusive or neglectful or anything. Uh, you wouldn't be held responsible for their behavior, even though they're kids. Uh, and then again, um, if you spanked them, perfectly fine. In fact. Uh, the government was on the parent side, and they all agreed. Kids need to be self; they need to be disciplined. They need to be spanked. They need to be whooped. Uh, if you don't spank your kids, uh, they're going to go crazy and they're going to go wild. And so that was the common belief and the assumption. And even today, uh, you can talk to adults, and many of them will still say that spanking is the best way. Some will say it's the only way, the only effective way. And if you mention any other way, like timeouts, for example, they'll laugh at you. Like, oh, that's not even possible. Uh, because they never tried it. They never tried it in their whole life. So, uh, in my experience, um, I, I actually got spanked. Um, and uh, I, I've had, I, I haven't had a, an abusive life. Uh, physically, I wasn't spanked a lot, but um, my mother uh, did a lot of yelling, and she controlled us and our father uh, um, by using her anger. Uh, she would get irate and angry if you crossed her. Um, she wanted you to listen to her when she talked, and if you looked away, or walked away, she would get angry. Yeah. And so you were held there with in fear, basically. Fear of her getting angry. You didn't want her to get angry. And so you, you sat there or stood there and listened to whatever she had to say. And you were respectful. And all of your behaviors, behaviors were, were based on not wanting the wrath of mom. And so I have... Uh, a, a brother and a sister and we all grew up in that sort of environment where even the dad did not cross mom uh, he avoided her and uh, occasionally they would argue where he would stand up for himself but most of the time um, he would avoid her and avoid any kind of conflict and so would we as kids we uh, it was a survival mode kind of life as kids now um, she was also very helpful, you know, she was very creative, gave us lots of good stuff, and it wasn't always bad. I mean, she was often happy and carefree and enjoyable and stuff. Um, but it's those those times when there's conflict that it can get really scary. And so uh, that was generally our form of discipline. It wasn't necessarily a spanking. It was what did you just say to me? You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> the dread and fear of crossing your mother. And so um, 
So there's not just uh, spankings, but there's also e emotional abuse, right? Uh, it could be verbal abuse. My mother never cussed at us, never threatened, to, you know, to, to, to beat us or to cause us any kind of permanent harm or anything. She didn't, you know, threaten to do anything crazy. But it was more like, you know, the fear of the Lord sort of approach. Um, and so those are considered abusive now. It was not then. It was considered good discipline then. And so times have changed. And so we can't go back to our parents or our grandparents and uh, point the finger and accuse them of something, you know, doing something wrong. Because they were not doing anything wrong. They were doing what everybody else was doing uh, back in the 1970s and 60s and 50s and 40s and going back. That was the total normal way to discipline your kids. And things have only changed recently. And by recent, I mean, you know, in the mid to late 80s. Um, uh, people started uh, emphasizing and promoting different types of discipline, such as timeouts, discussing, um, and, and so we can go through some of the things here um, on the screen here. So this is this is perplexity. It's a website you can go to. It's perplexity.ai. It's spelled P-E-R-P-L-E-X-I-T-Y dot AI. So you can go to that too and you can ask it anything. It's a really good site where it's, uh, it's more neutral, it's a question answer sort of thing, but it is AI. And so you can ask all the questions you can ever think of and learn a lot of stuff doing this. You can actually do research by asking questions like this. And so negative effects, negative effects of spanking children um, can lead to increased aggression. They, they feel like violence is fine. Parents are being violent. Why, you know, I should be violent. Behavioral problems. They get angry. Avoidant. They can lie. Who hasn't lied to avoid getting in trouble? So, um, so lots of lying uh, to get avoid uh, getting spanked. Mental health issues. In children, so you, you know you can become a perpetual liar. Uh, you can uh, become detached from everyone because you're afraid you're going to get in trouble. So it's you feel like it's you against the whole world. It could damage the parent-child relationship and create fear rather than respect. See how that works? You fear your parents instead of respecting them. And so respect is a really important thing for parents to uh, gain with their kids. And it should be a mutual respect where we respect uh, their kids' opinions. We should listen to them. We don't have to follow them. They don't need to be the leader, but we need to listen to their viewpoint and how they feel about things. Uh, and then by respecting their opinion and allowing them to speak and to, to have their, to, to be able to be heard, uh, that's showing them respect and um, then we can also require them to respect us. So when we ask them to go to their room and clean it up, they need to do it. And if they refuse to do it, that's disrespecting you. And you will then not give them the privileges of the internet or, or whatever it is, if they refuse to do as they're told. And you can also explain, you know, you're not harming them in any way. You're not telling them to do something that's wrong. You're telling them to do something that's actually good for them. You're teaching them self-discipline. You're telling them to, you know, keep things orderly and clean. And those are good things. Good things for all parents to teach their kids. And par parents should be teachers. Parents should be the primary teachers of their kids all through their lives until they hit 18. All right, next, uh, ineffectiveness. Uh, while spanking may stop behavior in the moment, it does not teach children right from wrong or improve behavior long term. It fails to address the root causes of misbehavior or teach positive alternatives. So you just spank your kid for doing something wrong and you never ask, why did they do that? And we don't teach them to do something that keeps them out of trouble. <clears throat> Instead, you just spank them for doing something wrong and you don't even say a word, you just walk away. 
and uh, so it kind of puts them in a fear sort of situation. Uh, expert res recommendations the the American Academy of Pediatrics pediatrics means kids like medical kids um, strongly advises against spanking children they advise against spanking children they state that spanking is linked to more defiance and aggressive behavior in children so the more you spank them the more defiant they are they they kind of hate you for spanking them it can increase the risk of mental health disorders and impaired brain development. So all that hateful emotion, and they become emotionally detached from their parents. Um, they can kind of go into their own little world, angry at the whole world. It can cause some issues. Uh, there are some more effective discipline methods that do not involve physical punishment. Alternatives, what are some alternatives? So, you know, you say, hey, you shouldn't spank their kids. And then they say, ah, shut up, don't tell me what to do. And they were probably spanked themselves, and that's why they're at the place they are now. They don't listen to other people, they're not reasonable, they're defiant, right? And so there's that word defiant right here, they're more defiant. Uh, alternative approaches, instead of spanking, if you want to break that loop, if you want to break the chain of violence against kids using spankings, and spankings means just, you know, a few whops, you know, to let them know who's boss. No permanent marks or anything. You're just letting them know, I am the boss, and you will go to your room now, or else you will get another spanking. Um, and so they go to the, ring, the room because they fear getting another spanking. Uh, and so instead of spanking, experts recommend positive reinforcement for good behavior setting clear consistent boundaries and consequences so like if they did something crazy okay your kid did something crazy and instead of spanking them sit them down and talk to them if they're belligerent and they absolutely refuse to cooperate um i think a spanking would be fine <laughs> if they're breaking your stuff and running around like a wild Indian and they refuse to stop, refuse to listen to you and they've gone totally wild and it's gotten to that point and you want to change that, then I think, yeah, uh, gently grabbing them, holding them still as you talk to them and set clear, consistent boundaries and consequences. You might actually have to hold them still while they're freaking out if they're you know the terrible twos or at whatever age they are um, you definitely want to get this when they're young um, but you need to set clear consistent boundaries what is okay what's not okay consequences for bad behavior that sort of thing let them know the rules of the house and let them know you know if they do something crazy or something wrong let them know what the consequences will be and don't make it violence don't make it yelling or screaming. Make it some sort of a timeout where they have to sit in their room. They're not allowed to have any privileges for a, a reasonable length of time, something like that. Um, so that they know that if they do something crazy, they'll have to be sitting still in a corner or you know, sitting still next to a wall for however many minutes. Uh, explaining expectations and reasoning with children. Get get them kind of on the same page as you where things make sense uh, get them to understand things that make sense universally like you know if you if you smack somebody you're gonna have to sit in your room and think about that for five minutes perfectly reasonable and you can also ask the kid say hey if you hit someone you, you're going to have to sit in your room and sit still on your bed or on the floor for five minutes. No playing, no doing anything, just sitting there staring at the wall or staring at the ground um, for five full minutes. Does that, does that sound reasonable to you? For example, if someone hits you, would it be a good consequence for them to have to sit in their room 
doing nothing for five minutes. And by talking to them, you can explain the reasoning of bad behavior and its connection to uh, some sort of a punishment that's nonviolent. And so you can get them to understand the reasonableness of the consequence that they are receiving for hitting others. All right, next we have employing timeouts. Employing, not employees, using timeouts is what they should say here. Using timeouts or privilege removal as disciplinary tools. So sit in silence against the wall or whatever. I, I, uh, my wife and I use uh, their age. So if you're 10 years old and you're still doing stupid things and you know better, you can sit at the wall or on your bed uh, ideally someplace where the parent can be watching that kid so they can't you know do things behind your back because by by age 10 these these kids and really at any age they're gonna do whatever they want to do if your eye isn't on them so it's much better to have that time out so they are in visual range the whole time so make them sit against a wall in that same room where you are so you can watch them the whole time uh, you can also uh, pr privilege removal, you know, cutting off the internet. You don't get any internet for the rest of the day. Oh, mom! Well, think about it the next time you decide, you know, you want to smack your sister. Uh, you're not going to have internet for the rest of the day. And you can decide whether it's worth it or not next time. And uh, so things like that. Um, they're nonviolent, but there are definitely consequences, and that's privilege removal modeling the behavior you want to see. This is where you, the adult, need to set the example. You don't get to just go crazy and do whatever you want and then tell the kids how you want them to act. If you, the parent, or you, the adult, if you're cussing, if you're yelling, if you're making fun of others, and then you see your kid doing the same thing, and then you tell your kids, don't do that or don't say that, well, they're just copying you, aren't they? And so we as parents need to set the example, and that's what this is talking about. So in conclusion, while spanking was more common in previous generations, current research overwhelmingly shows it is not an effective or appropriate way to discipline children. There are many alternate ways, alternative ways or methods that can teach children proper behavior without the negative effects associated with physical punishment. We also have all the laws, you know, about child abuse. Uh, so um, it can it can be very scary, um, especially if um, if a friend comes over, for example, and um, that friend refuses to leave. Um, are you going to pick them up and drag them out? No, <laughs> that's wrong. It's also illegal. That's child abuse. Even if it's not your own child, you can't drag a child out of your house. Um, you can call the parents. That would be number one. If, you're, if someone else's kid is going crazy, before you even let that kid into your house, you need to require that parent's phone number so that you can call that parent to come get their kid if they're not listening to you. And so you need to be careful about who you're letting into your house. This is your house. And even though we say, well, it's my rules, my house, well, we still have laws that go into your house. Uh, and that includes uh, child abuse <laughs> for your own kid and for other kids. Child abuse is not allowed. It's, it's illegal. And so we need to remember that. Uh, we, it, it's not just willy-nilly do whatever you want inside of your house, unfortunately. Um, we, um, we have parents uh, that think that they can just abuse anyone they want inside of their house. And uh, because we've had that in the past, uh, people just punching the crap out of their kids. And because of that kind of stuff, uh, government has had to come in to save the kids from abusive parents and parents can be abusive against each other and so a government has come in to try to break all that stuff up using laws and so it, it has been helpful 
uh, uh, parents think twice before they decide to abuse their kids or each other. They know that there is going to be a legal penalty for that. Um, and then parents also uh, need to understand that there will be consequences if they uh, abuse their kids. So, all right, so, so we've gone all through this. What are some alternative discipline methods that are effective? We've gone with timeout. Let's see if there's anything else. Uh, so it's kind of a short list here. Might be longer. All right, we're gonna zip through all the all the good stuff here. So if you're a young parent, or you still have kids in the house, um, ideally you want to start young, of course, um, and then kind of think about your own past. Um, as a kid. Imagine if your parents, or you as a parent, used praise and reward for good behavior to encourage its repetition. So if your kid is doing something good, reward that kid for doing great. Just saying you did an awesome job, just saying something encouraging is good enough. You know, doing a fist bump, good job, nice, you know, and that'll actually uh, encourage the other kids to do a good job. So they can get the same positive encouragement from their parents. Catch children being good. Recognize it specifically. Give children positive attention to re reinforce de desirable actions. See, it's being positive. So instead of being the, the ogre, instead of being the, the bully in the house, uh, you're being positive and you're encouraging positive behavior. Uh, then we go down to uh, clear communication. Uh, express feelings strongly without attacking character. So let them know how you feel. Let your kids know how you feel without making them feel bad, without insulting them, without, you know, saying bad things about them. Like, you'll never, and you this, and you that. That's attacking character. Don't do that. Uh, make them I statements, where you're saying, I feel very frustrated that you are doing these things. Express your emotions and your feelings and let the kid know how you feel about that. Uh, and don't attack them. Don't say all the you stuff. Uh, and then state clear expectations for behavior. And let them know, hey, you know, if you break things, this is going to be a consequence. You're going to have to sit and time out. Or you're going to lose the internet for the rest of the day. Um, explain rules in age-appropriate terms children can understand. Um, so three-year-olds are not 13-year-olds, right? So talk to them based on what age they are, uh, based on, uh, and you need to, to be self-aware and talk in, in words that those little kids understand. Like, you know, three-year-old, that was bad. Don't do that anymore, okay? Uh, okay. And that's a real simple way to, to fix that kind of behavior is to say, hey, we don't do that kind of stuff. If it's your first time and <clears throat> if they didn't know the rule, and say, hey, we, we don't co pull the cat's tail, okay? Okay. Um, and then if you see them doing it again, you can say, I told you not to pull the cat's tail. And now you need to sit and time out for three minutes or whatever it is. And so let them know, you know, the consequences. If you do it again, you'll have to sit and time out. So they know up front that there's gonna be a consequence for that bad behavior. Uh, and then of course, if they're 13, you can say, look, <clears throat> you know better than this. We've been over this many times. If you decide to walk out of the house without permission, and I don't know where you're going, number one, you'll be without the internet for the rest of the day. If you're gone without permission and I don't know where you are for more than an hour, I will call the police and let them know your name and let them know that you're missing, that you're out there somewhere without permission. And if the police have to pick you up, they might press charges. I don't know. So don't go out of the house without asking first. I need to know where you are, where you're going, and you need to get permission. If it's to a friend's house, I need to have that 
parents phone number I need to talk to them first before you go over there I need to check with the, your mom or dad and say hey is it okay if my kid goes over sure or no not a good time um, and so you need to ask the the adults need to talk first before kids go visit each other and especially as teenagers because uh, at, we were teenagers so we know what kind of trouble we can get in if parents aren't watching and so as a parent you need to make sure you're talking with other responsible parents and if if that kid wants to go to another kid's house and that parent refuses to give you their phone number and they won't talk to you well don't let your kid go to that house say no you can't go to their house because their parents won't talk to me that's the way it is I have to have their phone number and that parent has to talk to me uh, in a civilized way and if that parent is not civilized not willing to talk to another parent well that's not a good house to be in and so I don't want you to be friends with that kid and I don't want you going to that house and so a parent has every right to say that and to do that uh, parents need to be selective on the parents uh, that they let their kids go to their homes um, there can be a lot of crazy stuff that happens inside of another person's home and so you, you need to know who they are uh, ideally it would be friends and family like church friends ideally uh, friends that you trust you need to know them pretty well uh, you should be able to you know be invited to their house uh, have have dinner with them you know a few times so you know them pretty well uh, don't let your kids just go to some random kids house um, that is just it's, that's asking for abuse where you you won't know what happened but something crazy will happen inside of the house the kid will never tell you but now your your son or daughter has been damaged and you'll never know what happened they won't tell you and so that stuff happened so much still today and so parents really need to be careful about that all right so natural consequences allow children to experience the logical consequences or results of their actions cause and effect right you chose to do this you knew what the results would be and so then you just enforce the rules use consequences that are directly related to the misbehavior so don't just make up uh, consequences based on your emotions uh, make sure you have set rules and stick to those rules as far as you know behavior and consequences uh, follow through consistently with stated consequences enforcement uh, redirection and problem solving <coughs> redirect bad behavior <coughs> by showing the child what they need to do instead so yeah what should I do to stay out of trouble every what kid doesn't want to know how to handle a situation to stay out of trouble <clears throat> so if someone if one of your brothers or sisters hits you you're three years old or 13 or 17 if one of your brothers or sisters hits you or shoves you you know does something violent cusses you out something like that instead of hitting them or cussing them out as you know revenge or retribution what should I do instead you should walk away control your emotions let your parents know what happened if your parents choose to do absolutely nothing as a kid you can ask your parents to please have a rule or a consequence for that brother or sister can you like for example if, if you're a 13 year old and your 15 year old brother just shoved you to the ground because you were talking too much instead of smacking them or throwing something at them you tell your parents and the parents and that child can come up with a rule that says hey if you hit your brother or hit your sister or shove them uh, you have to get off of your game and you get no more internet for the rest of the day and the parent and the child <laughs> can agree together that that's the rule 
And then that child that hit the other one can say, hey, but they won't be quiet. I'm trying to focus on my game. And they, they keep on talking and they're trying to mess me up by talking to me all the time. And then you can tell that other kid that came to you originally and say, if you talk to your brother who's trying to play a video game and focus, if you talk to him and annoy him, you will be the one being confined to your room for the time that, you know, whatever age you are. Or you'll have to sit and time out in the room that your parent is in for purposely annoying your brother. And so there'll be consequences for not only the violence, but also for the person that caused the conflict in the first place. And if you hear noise, it's because it's raining. Right above me, it is raining. Um, and yes, it's a tin roof, so it sounds really cool as long as it's not leaking. <clears throat> All right, next. Help children understand the connection between actions and consequences, right? So, yeah, help them to know there's a cause and effect. And there's a reason, you know, for the discipline. It's not unfair. It's actually fair. And it's, it, it's uh, you know, used in the right way. And then you use those rules. You can actually write down those rules. Like on a dry erase board, you're going to have it somewhere like in the kitchen or the hallway. Have a dry erase board as far as rules. You know, uh, you know the, the, the behavior. You know, as, as behaviors come up, because you won't think of them off the top of your head, as the actual behavior happens, write that behavior on the board and then draw an arrow to the consequence. So at the top you can have behavior, consequence, that sort of thing, right? Or action and result, or cause, effect, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, just write it down so they know. If I do this, this will happen. If I do that, this will happen. And then it can be good for you as a parent as well. You can say, okay, if they do this, what's the consequence? Okay, I need to do this. And so stick to the rules that have been written down and are posted, available to all to see, so that it's totally fair and they understand the connection between actions and consequences. They understand the, the fairness as well. They need to, to have a sense of fairness where if they do something that's wrong, it's fair to have a consequence for that. They should not seek to not have a consequence. They should know that there is going to be a consequence for intentionally bad behavior. Timeouts. Uh, use brief timeouts to remove the child from rewarding situations. Allow one minute of timeout per year of age. This is exactly what we did, and it worked perfectly. Um, when I first got married, uh, we were in our 20s and our first kid, and um, we had not even talked about timeouts yet. But as soon as the first situation came up where somebody was throwing, one of the kids was throwing something, and, uh, and I said, well, you need to spank that kid. Uh, my wife immediately says, nope, nope, we need to do timeouts. And I said, ah, timeouts don't work. They won't even sit there. And she said, yes, they will. Because we've done it at our house. In fact, she was one of those kids that had to sit in time out. So she knows they actually work. I had no idea because I came from a family where um, it was all spankings. There, was, there were no timeouts in my family. It was all spanking. Everything was spanking or it was some sort of, you know, verbal threat. Like if you do that again, so help me. <laughs> that sort of thing. I'm going to get a switch. You better shape up. Or else, <laughs> it's always those verbal threats. And so we lived in fear of spankings. But um, uh, it's much better to have the timeouts. They do work. Try them. You will notice they work. Your guidelines exactly like this. Brief timeouts. Remove them from the, from the rewarding situations. You know, they can't play video games. They can't be having the fun that they were having if they had bad behavior. Allow one minute per year of age. If they're five years old, that's five minutes. Ten years old, ten minutes. Use timeouts for both the child and parent to calm down. Ah, that's a good one. So a timeout is for you and me. So if your kid is going crazy, and it's going to be frustrating for you as a parent, right? And you're going to be like, 
you, Johnny, Billy, Sally, <laughs> whatever their name is, <laughs> Laquisha, <laughs> uh, uh, let's see, Yin, Yang, <laughs> whatever the nationality, uh, doesn't matter. Okay, it works across the globe, worldwide. Any nationality, any country, you can use this. Okay, I only know English. And so that's why I'm speaking English, but this discipline, it works across the board, across all countries. Uh, emotions, all people have emotions, right? From childhood all the way through old age, we all have emotions. And so timeouts are great. Just put, putting yourself in a place where you can calm down. So you put that kid in timeout for however many minutes, and you also can sit and watch that kid and watch your timer. You, you'd actually have a timer where you crank it up to three or five or seven or 12, however many minutes. Um, and typically timeouts, you only need them uh, up until say age eight or nine or so. And kids by that time, they're doing a good job. And all you have to do is say, um, you know the rules, right? You don't want to sit in timeout, right? So behave, you know, you know good behavior, and so control yourself. And so by the time they're 10, 11, 12, uh, they know self-discipline, they know how to control themselves, and they're good kids. Uh, so modeling, modeling is about you and me. Uh, parents, demonstrate appropriate behavior and self-control. You have to learn to control your mouth. Your mouth, you can't cuss, you can't get emotionally out of control. You can't get angry at your kids. You can't threaten them, okay? It's not good to do that. These are your kids. As a parent, you're supposed to be the one protecting them and guiding them how to be good kids. Threatening them, hitting them. How is that protecting your kids? You're doing that out of anger, out of frustration. And so the very first thing you as a parent need to learn to do is to calm yourself through self-control, self-discipline. Use your will to control your emotions, calm your emotions, back off of that anger, focus on calming down. Choose, that's your will. Choose to calm down. Choose to relax. Self-discipline, self-control. Get in a, an emotionally neutral state and then start thinking and then apply the rule. Kid's name, sit right there for this many minutes, which is also your age. I, the parent, will sit over here and I will watch you and I'll watch the timer and we'll both wait for the timer to ring. After the timer rings, you can get up and go play and do what you were doing before. However, if you get up before that timer rings, if you start playing or trying to sneak around like if I, if I glance at something else and then you try to do something, like sneak away while I'm not looking and you don't sit there for the full number of minutes, you will have to go back and redo all of the minutes. So if you got all the way up to six or seven minutes and you had eight minutes to sit there and you decided you wanted to get up at five minutes, well now you have to get back in that spot and sit there for another eight full minutes. Not just the three minutes. You don't have to just you know finish what you did before. No, it starts all over. You have to sit there for a full eight minutes because you did not sit there for the full eight minutes. You have to sit still for the full number of years you are old. Once you do that and you have that self-discipline, this is teaching your kids self-discipline as well. Once you have the self-discipline and sit there for that number of minutes, then you can get up and go play. All right.
So this is for parents as well. Demonstrate appropriate behavior and self-control. Show children how to make amends after mistakes. Like you can show them how to say, I apologize. I should not have done that. You can give them a hug. You can also show forgiveness and mercy and say, it's okay. I still love you. It's nothing personal. I'm just trying to get you to be civilized. I'm trying to get you to be nice to other kids. And just let them know that you're just trying to teach them the right way to go. And confirm that you still have a good relationship, that you're not mad at them. That's really important. Uh, let them know that you love them and that behavior is separate from relationship. Um, their bad behavior is not going to harm your relationship with them. Model the behaviors you want to see in your children. So, if you get angry and pout like a child, well, how can you, you expect your parents or your kids not to do the same thing? So, as a parent, you have to be self-controlled, self-disciplined, and uh, you need to live a good life. As a parent, yeah, it's not a joke. A parent is a responsibility, and you have to choose to learn to be self-disciplined. You have to live a good, clean life. You can't be drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, cussing kids out, smacking them, throwing things. None of that is right. Not just illegal, but it's not right. It's the wrong way to raise your kids. Who am I to tell you how to raise your kids? Well, I am also a parent of four fully raised adult kids, and they're all doing very well. Timeouts worked. I spanked one of my kids once. Three of my kids I never spanked. And my kids did the timeouts only a few times. And they were good kids all through their teenage years into adulthood. We did not have to use timeouts. We did have to use consequences, like we had to pull the plug on the internet on several occasions. And so uh, taking away rewards is really helpful and really use, especially, you know, in their ages from age 10 and up. When your kids stop listening to you, your kids think they're smarter than you then you can let them know that you're the one that pays the bills, you're the one who buys the food, um, you're the one um, who takes them places in the car, uh, you're the one who provides the internet. It's your home. And uh, so, yeah, they can either uh, sleep at your house or they can, you know, sleep in a jail cell or juvie in a jail cell. Um, is that what they want? Um, you need to teach them, uh, first of all, you know, by leading by example. Choose to be a good person. Um, break the habit of alcohol and cigarettes or smoking anything, any kind of drugs. Just get rid of all that stuff. Uh, choose to, to live right, live healthy, lead by example. Um, show your self-discipline and your self-control, not just for yourself, but use that also for your kids, where you're, you're modeling yourself as a good parent and a good person. Uh, choose to be a good person if you're a parent. And uh, these are your kids. They're gonna live way longer than you. And so if you choose to control yourself, become a good person, uh, no more parties, none of that stuff, you're gonna focus on protecting your kid from harm, uh, keep them away from the internet with all that crazy garbage, all the predators out there, it's nuts. Make sure they're not corrupting themselves with the internet, sneaking around and stuff at, inside their room, staying up all night. Don't let them have a smartphone until, you know, like 15 or 16 years old. Um, they do not need the internet. Uh, they can have video games off the internet. Um, you need to tightly control that as a parent. It's a big deal. Uh, once they're able to see porn and they see violence and they see people killing other people, it damages them. It really does. Uh, it, it lets them know that that kind of behavior is okay, and it's not. Uh, so you have to really be careful about what your kids are allowed to see. 
once they see things it can't be unseen right so uh, be very careful about what they see and what they do and where they go these are your kids protect them with your life all right um, by using these positive discipline strategies consistently consistently is really important we have to do it on a regular basis so that's where the, the whiteboard really comes in handy make the rules write down the rules not just for the kids but also for yourself um, so this is giving yourself you know bad behaviors if I do this this is the consequence for myself as a parent <laughs> <Okay>? <laughs> discipline yourself as a parent show that you're serious about this by leading by example uh, and being consistent make sure you consistently enforce those rules uh, if you're not consistent then they won't believe that you're going to enforce those rules which will make them think that they can get away with it so you have to be consistent parents can effectively teach children see you're the teacher don't rely on that school teacher to do all the all the dis discipline for your kids that is not the parent you teach your kids uh, how to manage their behavior see uh, parents can and I'm gonna add should need to must this is your obligation as a parent to effectively teach your children to manage their behavior without resorting to physical punishment so in the same way you don't hit your kids your kids don't hit each other violence is not an option the key is to remain calm that's self-discipline that's controlling your own emotions being patient allowing some time first you you calm and then you wait you allow that time to calm down to relax it doesn't take long 15 20 seconds suddenly all of that high blood pressure all that excitement this drops fades away for the kid and for you that's the value of patience and allowing 5 10 15 20 seconds of time of just sitting and doing nothing saying nothing allowing a long pause to calm down so you can think straight and so you can properly discipline your kids in the right way not in anger but according to the rules that you've already set but focusing on teaching rather than punishing so you're you're teaching your kids the right way instead of it being punishment punishment is like a retribution it's like bullying well you did this so I'm gonna do this I'm the boss it's, it, it really is a bullying mentality and we need to get away from that as a civilization uh, we need to instruct teach our kids good behavior through ourselves and by s making rules and sticking to those rules hopefully this has been helpful um, this is going to be true f forever uh, globally this is not some time sensitive you know an update on current events sort of thing this is how to raise good kids around the world how to have a good civilized society so that all the the crimes drastically decrease where the authorities instead of them using guns we just talk to people who've disobeyed the rules and we just say hey you know what the rules are and so these are the consequences and we you know if we're, if we're all self-disciplined uh, we can stay calm and we can say yep you're right I did that and that's the consequence and so it's totally fair that's that's the ideal it will never be there of course we will always have people that are not following this model they should and we need to and that's why we need to share 
this sort of information with anyone we can. First, we need to try it ourselves, see if it works. And then once you see that it does work, you can then show other parents how to do it right and how it works. And you can show your friends. You can invite them over, your adult friends. Bring them over and show your friends how timeout actually really does work. And that way you can convince them that it does work. Um, I do not advise putting your kids on video. Do not, you know, video your kid in timeout. That is not okay. It's going to embarrass your kids in the future. It can also be exploitive. Uh, the kid has no choice in the matter. And then once the kid turns 18 and 20 and 25 and 30 and 40, that video is still out there. And it's very embarrassing. And even as a teenager, um, would you want videos of you as a kid getting in trouble on the internet? No. And so don't do that to your kids. Uh, protect your kids from the internet. Do not let the whole world see your kid, okay? Uh, they do not need to see your kid. Keep your kid private, keep them protected, defend your kid, uh, teach them, teach, don't punish, okay? Teach your kid the right way. Don't make yourself out to be this mean ogre to be feared. Uh, you're trying to teach and establish a respectful relationship. Not to be friends, but to respect each other. So that once you're both adults, your, your kid looks back on his childhood and says, you know, my parents did a really good job raising us. Uh, you want your kids to have good memories and to have positive thoughts about you. You don't want your kids to fear you as adults. You don't want them to hate you as adults. Um, all right, so hopefully all this is helpful to you. Hopefully you will actually try this and see that it's true. This is not me talking. This isn't something I just made up. This is, you know, perplexity. I looked up the question. Is it okay to spank children? We have negative effect of effects, what are alternatives, and here's all the alternative, alternatives spelled out. This is not me making this stuff up. This is from Perplexity AI. So this is widely accepted, proven ways to discipline our kids in the right way. So try it out. It will work. All right, that's all I got. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, this was actually longer than the previous one, almost an hour. But <laughs> but definitely needed in all societies around the world. All right, so um, hope you have a good day. And if you haven't already done the like thing and all that stuff, um, <laughs> if you like the video, do the likey thing so that other people can see it as well. All right, and definitely spread the word. All right, see you later.